Thank you so much for coming to my channel. Hey, I have a uh, mini album to show you today that I'm pretty happy with and I hope that you um, find it to be useful. I'm going to have a tutorial on afterwards. Uh, but this book is uh, for my husband and my son who love baseball. And this paper is by Cartabella and it's called Baseball. And um, I have made a five page mini album. This book measures eight by eight, and if you're interested in this paper collection, it's at Country Craft Creations um, at the time of this recording. Um, and so you might want to snag this if you've got a baseball person in your family. But let me go through it real quick, and then you can decide to continue watching if you would like to make this. Um, there, Like I said, there's a tutorial following. Um, I will probably put up a couple of captions here and there just as I was making it, some things that might make it a little bit easier for you or some things that I realized afterwards. So I always recommend that you watch my videos first before you start making it just in case I have an oops here and there, which happens. So um, so like I said, this is an eight by eight book and the pages are seven and a half by seven and a half. And um, the front, it's supposed to look like the home plate or the home base. And that's why it's a, a Pentagon. And I have some of the ephemera, the pennant flags, and some chipboard stickers. The home run um, are some thicker stickers I just happened to have in my stash. I had a canvas, um, I got a package of canvas shapes, and so it was the perfect size, and I just kind of dirtied it up with my Distress ink to make it, you know, represent a, a base. Have a chipboard uh, catcher. This was from the ephemera, and I backed it on chipboard. And then this is a chipboard uh, sticker. And I have a little one down here. The sides, uh, what do these measure? Let's see. It uh, looks like I use between about a, about a two and a half inch uh, spine. I can't remember if I did two or two and a half, but when I, with all the paper on it and stuff, it looks like two and a half. Um, but that's the Prima paper that you can get at Country Craft Creations that looks like leather. And it's really nice to work with. And then the back is just paper, nice so it stays flat. Um, so I hope you uh, find this to be as lovely as I do. I totally love it. So when you open it, you have alternating pages that go back and forth. And so it's going to kind of expand as you open it up. Um, the pages on the left are full size pages. The pages on the right are half size pages. Um, so let's just kind of go through one at a time. These are two pocket pages that are independent of one another. And inside there is a tag. The tags are just white. And then I attach some ephemera from the uh, ephemera pack with some um, cording. What do you call that? The not seam binding, um, twine. And there's one in each pocket. They're three inches wide. Um, I don't remember how long they are, but I give that in the tutorial. Um, and then on this side, these are also two separate pockets, but I matted it to make it look like one, but that's to prevent the tags from sliding back and forth. But this would be for a photo. And then the tags again have this, um, 
just a solid white with the sticker in the corner and then the twine up at the top. I wanted it to look masculine so I didn't really use a whole lot of seam binding. When you turn the page, the back um, is just a pocket page and I just ha I have two mats. The backs, I just put that to like show where a sticker, or not a sticker, uh, where a picture would go and then it's plain on the back. But um, you could put a picture here and so I use stamps to represent where the pictures go. And then this lifts up and there is a one inch strip here that's open that you could tuck some things into. But this comes out, this whole uh, page comes out and you could do photo here, journaling here if you had one of those like white pens or a silver or gold pen that would look really cool. And then the backs are all plain. Okay. So then um, I'll go ahead and do the second page also. It, is the same as the page prior to it and that was by mistake. This was supposed to be the back but I made a boo-boo so if you want to when you're making yours this should be the back side. Um, two mats um, solid on the back and then again you have this pull out. All of the pull outs are the same top loading place to tuck something here and then the backs are the solid. So let me go back to the right hand side. So I said that these are half pages and that's because there is a booklet inside of the half pages. Okay. And this booklet, um, you could put a photo here if you like. The back I did put some paper to show that this would be where the picture goes. And then when you open it, there is a place you could tuck a photo or glue, you know, a photo down, but I left these little things open. And these flip open and I made it look like a diamond, a baseball diamond. And I made sure that I left the bases uh, open and the pitcher's mound, they're open on the side so that you can tuck pictures in. Okay, I love how that one turned out. And then you just stick those right back into the pocket. And the back um, is just the other side. Um, this is glued down. I ran out of paper the full length so I just kind of used a different piece to piece it together. Um, the, I'm kind of going random back and forth here, but this is a belly band and it's folded in a way that it prevents the tags from falling down. If I were to do this again, I would make the belly band a little bit more narrow, but um, it holds three photo mats and they get progressively bigger, but because of how we fold the paper, they don't slide down. So that's kind of nice. Back on this side, here's another half page. St. Louis, that's my husband and the, my son, their favorite team, so I had to put that on there. But again, you open it and there's a place for pictures and then when you open the flaps, you have that uh, baseball diamond again. And on the back, just a place for a photo. And it just tucks right back in here. And then there's the other side of the half page. This page, this is one that um, I need to remember to put a caption for. Um, when I score the paper, I did not, um, I needed to add an extra score mark so that there's a 1 8 inch gusset on these uh, doors so that they fold nice. Um, so hopefully I remember to put that caption on. But um, this closure is, um, it, the doors are held closed with this just little strip. And then uh, they open and you have place for either pictures or for journaling and these are open and then this flips up and this comes down. This is a little pocket that you can tuck things into. This is just glued onto that little pocket. It's from the ephemera uh, package. But the reason why I had to do the 1 8 inch gusset here is so that it laid nice on top of this bulk. And so I need to remember to, I don't have that in my tutorial, so I need to go back and put a caption. I hope I remember. Uh, and then these just close by inserting this little strip into these little belly band type things. And on the opposite page then, all of, uh, we have that pocket again that's held closed with some mats. And we have a place for a photo. You lift up, there's a place to tuck something in. This comes out plain on the back. 
and then I put a pocket on the back page to store extra photos or tickets or, or what have you. So when you close it, I put the left down, then the right, then the left, then the right, and then the left, and then, oopsie, yeah, and then just, oh, I have a decorate, uh, my chipboard got stuck. Um, and then it just closes like so, and I have, it's a magnetic closure, okay? So that is my home run book. Um, I hope you're uh, interested in making this. If so, continue to watch. Um, it's not a hard book to make. It does get a little tricky with the cover, um, cutting the paper um, when you're dealing with something that's not straight, that it's got that point, but I'll get you through it. <laughs> so watch the tutorial all the way through before you start making it. Um, this is the Cartabella paper called Baseball and you can get it at Country Craft Creations. And stay tuned and my tutorial will follow. Thanks everybody. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I'll continue to put out tutorials and project shares. So thank you everybody. Let's start with the cover of our book. Um, the chipboard measurements, I'll go ahead and give you those. The um, pieces that you're going to need are two that are eight by eight, two that are two by eight, and one that is four by eight. And then once you have those cut, you do want to go ahead and put your score tape or whatever kind of adhesive on there that you like. Okay. Um, I have already done that to all of them. Uh, we want this to be the home base and so we need to do some measuring on this piece of chipboard so that you can cut it evenly. So because it's an 8 by 8 square it doesn't matter where you start but um, I measured up two and a half inches and put a tick mark and then I measured two and a half inches and put a tick mark. On the other side, I found the center, which is at four inches, and I put a tick mark. And then I drew my lines from one to the other so that I can get an even cut, okay? And now I need to trim that. Let me move this out of the way. So I'm going to use a straight, I'm gonna use it my ruler. I have a metal ruler and I'm going to use my ruler as my guide and I will use my cutter here. I might have to go through a couple of times. Now some people like to do one side and then flip it over to do the other side to make sure that it's even. I'm just going to go ahead and look and mine is even so I don't need to worry about that. I have a piece of I went ahead and put my tape on first to get full coverage on the back. All right, so I have two lines here because I, maybe I will put that there. Try and get it as even as possible. Does that line up? Looks like it. almost there there we go and so that will be our home base for our front cover on the back all right so let me throw away this excess chipboard so now it's time to wrap now I wrote myself a note to put a large magnet here because if I don't write myself a note I sometimes forget so um, let's go ahead and get our paper ready to wrap the chipboard and for this come on let me try something here hmm I don't, when it's black, it doesn't show up very well. Is that better? Maybe? Okay, there we go. Um, I'm using two pieces that are 10 by 12 and one piece that is 10 by 6 to lay out my pieces. And now I'm going to adhere those together 
um, for the cover. So we want it 10 high because our book is eight inches and I, I like to go an inch higher and an inch lower. And I am gonna use art glitter glue. Now I might lay out my pieces first to see if I want the small piece in the center or at the end. So let me just do that real quick because I want it to look, I don't want a seam where I have a fold. So if I lay out my pieces, and then it's just going to be approximate. Now see that would work, but then I have this here. That would be on a seam, but I have extra at the end. So if I moved that here, yeah, I'm going to put it, um, my small piece in the center and then I'll start with this piece and lay it down so that the seam is in the center of this piece. That is what I'm going to do. Okay. So let me clean this off again and I will get my art glitter glue. I feel like there's a delay in my photo, in my camera. Let me try something. This is irritating me. Okay, I've been messing with the settings of my camera, and I don't know if I've made it better or worse, but I'm tired of messing with it, so hopefully you'll be able to see well enough. I apologize. I am no camera person, that's for sure. So right now I am just attaching um, my wrap paper. That's what I call it, wrap paper. And this is for the cover again. I feel like I've been away from the camera for a long time, but it's because I've been messing with the camera. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that's attached real well. And now I'm going to attach the last piece. I need my glasses on. Okay. And I am using the art glitter glue. I used to use score tape, but this works just great. And I think it's more economical, so that's what I'm using now. I have about a one-fourth of an inch between a one-eighth and a one-fourth inch overlap on my paper as I'm gluing it down. Okay. Now you always, I think, want to lay down your chipboard first to make sure it is in the right spot before you start taking off the backing of your score tape. So remember I said I was going to start with this piece. This is a 2 by 8 piece and I'm going to put it on the seam. And then I'm going to have an 8 inch piece. And my space between the chipboard will be about a fourth of an inch because I use score tape in between. Alright, so that works on this side. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start um, putting the chipboard down and I'm going to use a ruler to make sure that I get it at a one inch border. So I just have this that I use. I'm going to lay that down and I'll start with this one. Now I feel like there's not enough light. Ugh. Okay. Hopefully it'll be easy enough to see and I need to just quit worrying about it. I'm excited to get this album done. I know that a lot of people like this paper, me being one of them. Okay, so I'm going to press down, make sure that's lined up right, and I'm going to center it on that seam. I'm going to press down. I'm going to get my 1 fourth inch score tape, and I have a feeling I'm going to need a new roll. And I'm going to place a piece on either side of my chipboard. as close to the chipboard as you can get it. Okay. And this is to uh, have your book fold nicely without any cracking at the, at the fold. Okay. I think that's a terrible picture. Why can't I figure this out? Okay, so now on the left-hand side of the 
two inch spine. I'm going to lay an eight inch piece and I used the full sheet. The lighting in here is terrible. <gasps> I don't know if that's better or not. Um, I used the, she, uh, at the Country Craft Creations, they have uh, eight and a half by 11 sheets and it's a real big time saver when it comes to covering a large area. So I'm gonna scoot this down. And make sure that doesn't move. I'm gonna butt it up to that score tape that I laid down. Press. I'm gonna keep going to my left, and now you need the other two inch piece after you put some score tape down on the side of your eight inch. So I've been racking my brains when it comes to this book because I wanted it to be something different. And so that's how I came up with the cover having that side piece look like a base. We'll see. I hope I can get it wrapped around there well enough. Okay. Um, And let's lay that down right up against the score tape. And now I'm going to move it down and do the last piece on the left hand side here. And remember I have a reminder to myself about the large magnet because I do not want to forget to put my magnet on. So I'm going to take off, I had a piece patchwork this one. I had little pieces of score tape here and there. And then we'll lay that down. Okay, you can fast forward this part if you are bored <laughs> and you know what you're doing. Okay. One inch border. Oh, I forgot to put my score tape down. Oh, I'm out of score tape. So I need to get some one fourth. Let me pause this. found my last roll of one fourth inch score tape, so I'm going to have to order some. Okay, this is the um, four inch piece. Uh, I lost my... This doesn't look very even to me. Yeah, I got off just a hair. Okay, now this is more than one inch on this side and that doesn't bother me, but you can always trim it if you want to. And so now we just need to go back to the right hand side and apply the base plate. Okay. And there's a lot of score tape to take off on this one. And then we're going to do the trimming around the base. I am a little nervous about this weird shape and covering it with the wrap paper, so let's hope that this goes smoothly. We might have to do some adjusting as we go, and that's fine. I just don't want any chipboard to be showing at that corner. So I'm trying to think through it before I start. I have some overlapping here, so that's why it's 
taken me a second to get this off. Like I said, you're not hurting my feelings if you fast forward. <laughs> okay. There we go. Oh, that's not good. get the backing off of this. Okay. I had some overlap. That was the issue. Okay. Sorry about that. And here we go. And press down real well. I get rid of my scraps here and then um, the next thing I want to do is trim off the excess I use a different cutting pad because even though this says it's it, you're able to cut on it it still leaves marks and so I'm gonna go ahead and trim off an inch and an inch on this side Have to be perfect. Okay. And so now we're going to place all of our score tape around the perimeter so that we can roll it over. So we're going to put score tape on the chipboard along the edge and on the edge of our black paper. Okay, so I use one fourth inch here and one fourth inch all the way around. Tape is on the perimeter of chipboard. Tape is on the perimeter of the black paper. I went ahead and mitered my corners so that you have just a little bit of uh, space here. You don't want it right up to the corner of the chipboard. Did that on the two squared end pieces. And then down here on this end, I went ahead and put my tape around. We are going to have to do some cutting because of this corner. This is the part. Um, watch this first in case I make a mistake. Don't do it until you watch the video first. So I'm going to do a straight line up to the corner of the base before it starts to angle. And I'm just not going to go all the way to the corner, but pretty stinking close. So I'm going to just clip a straight like so. Okay. And I'm going to do that on the other side too. So let me turn that around and I'm just cutting a straight line up to that corner. Okay. So now we'll wrap the side pieces. Um, I like to bring up my chipboard and kind of bend it and get it to crease. I also like to put a strip of um, art glitter glue up along the edge. You'll notice I already took the score tape backing off of my um, spacer pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and start removing the backing. I like to do the long sides first. Get that out of the way. I just moved that a little bit so it wasn't in the way. This is so long it's hard to get everything on camera. I'm just going to move this a little bit. Like I said, just put a thin line of the art glitter glue. Then the paper sticks to the chipboard real nice and you get a smooth look. Okay, like so. I'm going to let that sit just for a second. Okay. I'm going to let that glue soak in just a hair. And then I'm just going to be pushing up from the center and off to the sides to lay it down flat. Okay. And just bring your hands up. We don't want any buckling, so smooth as you go. Okay. Now I'm going to take my 
burnishing tool and push down real well. And I'm also going to try and kind of push them in those little grooves where the chipboard meets. And I'm also going to just take my tool and go along the edges to make sure that that paper is sticking real well. Depending on the paper you're using, be careful. You don't want to rip your paper. This is a strong paper with a linen base and so it's pretty durable. Okay, I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing to the other side. Kind of give it a memory to know that it's folding. Removing the backing of the score tape. A little bit over here on the sides so it doesn't stick to that. If I can get it up, there we go. Over here, I'll just lift this up a little bit. Okay, go ahead and run that glue bead across the bottom now, up against the chipboard. Let it sit just for a second. And then we'll adhere that down and then we'll do the left end because that'll be the easiest one and then we're going to work with this corner piece. All right. So go ahead and lift it up starting in the center. And work your way down to the end. All right, push up and out. Okay. Go ahead and burnish that real well. And then again, run it along the edge. So it's a nice crisp look. Okay, so I am running out of room here on my desk with this long piece, but I want to move the angle a little bit so you can see what I'm doing down here now. I've got it, hope that you can see that. So now we just need to do the same thing on this short end. This is not the angled end. I'm putting some glue along the chipboard. I'm going to poke in these little corners so that they wrap around that piece of chipboard and you don't see it sticking out. And then I'm just going to bring that up and over. And then I'm going to burnish. The corners look real good on that cor uh, end. So let's hope that's a good sign for this end. Okay. Now I have to do some thinking if I'm going to bring this over. I have a feeling I need to make a straight cut here and then do some trimming. And this I need to do some trimming also. Okay, so I'm going to do one corner. Watch first. So if I fold this over, I don't want to see the corner. So I'm going to do another straight cut at the corner here. I think that's going to work. Okay, and then I'm going to do at the uh, straight down at the, can you see that? And where it comes to a point, I'm also going to cut straight down. Ooh, I hope this is right. <laughs> cut straight down. Not a, I'm not doing an angle. At least I hope I'm not. I can't see very well. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to cut just a hair. Let's see. I'm going to have to trim this just a hair. So I'm kind of taking in a little triangle. So let me show you that. Okay. That's where I'm at. I think that's going to work. Okay. So let's take off the backing. I'm going to have to move, take that off too. And I'm going to put that glue bead that makes sense? Glue bead. Okay, give it a second to soak in. So 
bring it up and over. Press down. And my corner is covered. I don't see any chipboard yet, so that's awesome. Let me show you. There's no chipboard showing through that black corner. And I think it's because we did a, a straight cut rather than an angled one. So let's, I'm turning this around so I can see what I'm doing over here. So I'm going to, let's see. So if I fold this over, I'm going to need to cut at an angle here. Let's see. I'm going to need to cut a little triangle out. Like so. You might have to trim it a little bit. Keep bending it over so you can see if it's landing nicely. I don't want it to hang over. Okay. I gotta keep moving this to see what I'm doing here. Okay, and then now this one I'm going to cut straight. You know what, I'm going to cut this straight too. So it looks like a rectangle. This looks like a rectangle. Okay, I'm going to take off the backing. So I looked at, I turned my book so that I look, this looks straight to me at the bottom, and then I just cut straight like so. And that seems to be working, and I'm feeling pretty good about this. I have a little bit to tuck right here on the end. Okay, and away we go. I think I'm happy with this. I was so nervous and we'll take a look at it here make sure no corners now if you do have some corners showing get your black sharpie <laughs> there's a way to get around anything so let's take a look got some glue that's not the chipboard look no chipboard showing woohoo look nothing showing the corners that's glue Oh, I'm so happy, you guys. That worked out nice. Okay. I hope yours turned out just as well. I was, I'm real content. Now, I think I'm going to just kind of show you now how this is going to look as you bent, bent, fold it over. Here is our base. And when you open it, yay. Okay. This is where our magnet's going to go. And I'm going to put myself, I'm going to put a little note right now because I know myself and I will forget. So I'm just going to write magnet on a sticky note. And I'm going to place it on this flap. Okay. And then I'm going to need a magnet here so I'm going to place a sticky note on this end too so I don't want to do any matting with the uh, designer paper until I've taken care of magnets okay so I'm gonna move that to the side Wow I'm happy okay I'm gonna move that to the side and let's talk hinges so you're gonna need two pieces one of them I cut at seven and three eighths by seven, and that's seven and three eighths tall because my pages are seven and a half. And so I go one eighth smaller so that they fit on the hinge real well. And the second piece is seven and three eighths by six and a half. Okay, now I did scoring a little bit differently because I have three hinges on this piece. Okay, can you see that? And on this piece, I only have two. And I didn't, so my pages go back and forth, okay? And so I didn't want them to be exactly lined up. So if you look, the spacing is different. Oh, how do I show you this? Uh, 
Hold on. I've got to get away this. The spacing is different between the two. So I have half inch uh, gussets on the side and a half inch in the middle. Okay. And then on this one, I have one fourth inch, one fourth inch, and then half in the center. So that when these are put into my book, I know you guys can't see that very well. When I put these into my book, they kind of mesh. These two actually fall into the gusset area. I'm tr Maybe if I, let me get some different color paper down. Hold on. Let's see if that makes a difference. Probably not, but. Okay. I don't know. Can you see? So these two hinges go in between these when you make them so that hopefully the pages don't hit each other. Okay. If you can't see that, I apologize. My, my camera situation is not the best. Okay. So let me give you the... I have my little cheat sheet here. So this is how I, when I make a book, I always write down the measurements in a notebook as I go. And I do that um, for myself in case anybody has any questions when I put the, um, the video up. Because sometimes a year or two later, people ask me questions. And I'm like, ah, I don't remember. So I write it down here. And then I can also do my adjusting as I go and scratch things out. And then I go back and I put the sticky notes on um, once I have the exact measurements. So take the piece that was set. This is going to be the three hinge one. Okay. So take um, the seven and three eighths is going to be the long going up and down. Place the seven inch piece going across your scoreboard. So if this was my piece, the seven uh, inches is across the top. Okay. This is just a scratch piece of paper because as you can see, my hinges are done. So let me um, get this close to the camera so you can write it down if you want. We're on this top one and we're going to score at one and a half inches, one and three fourths, two and a fourth, two and three fourths, three and a fourth, that's three and three fourths, four and a fourth, four and three fourths, five and a fourth, five and three fourths, and six. Okay, so you'll notice that there's a half inch space except for the first two, that's a fourth of an inch, and the last two, that's a fourth of an inch. Okay, so if you want to write that down, I don't know how clear that is. So go ahead and burnish on your score lines. The second one, again, you're going to put the seven and three eighths is the long way. You're going to put the six and a half inches at the top. And here are the scores for that. One and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five. So these are all one half inch increments and you stop at the five inch mark. Okay. So because I already made my hinges, you'll, um, I wonder if I should make another one and come back on and show you. Some of you already know how to make the hinges, but I notice I don't have wings coming out. I wrap mine around so that's more sturdy. And then if I make a mistake on my book, I don't have the wings to deal with. Okay. So they go, they don't wing out. So I'm trying to decide if I should link you to another video that does hinges or if I should just bite the bullet and make two more. You know what? I'll make one and then you'll be able to see how I did it and you'll be able to make the other one. So let me get a piece ready and I will come show you how to do the gluing and folding just in case you don't know how to do hinges. If you know how to do hinges, fast forward. Okay, let me show you how I'm going to do this. I did. I just found a piece of scratch paper, made sure that it was seven inches across, so I can show you the scoring. It mine's not as long. It's not seven and three eighths inches long, but that's okay. So remember, the score marks were one and a half, one and three fourths, and now we're going to go two and a fourth, 
two and three fourths, three and one fourth, three and three fourths, uh, four and a fourth, four and three fourths, five and one fourth, five and three fourths, and now we just go a fourth of an inch to six. Okay, and hopefully you wrote those down when you, I have that displayed. So you burnish your score mark. So th I don't know if you can see, there's my scoring and I'm just going to go ahead and burnish and fold I would normally use my burnishing tool, but because this is a scratch one, I'm not going to do it. But I normally use my burnishing tool and make it tool and make it really crisp. Okay, so this first one fourth inch is going to actually be the spacing, like a gusset. And so after that one fourth inch, these first two half inch pieces become your first hinge. Okay, then you have a the next one after you have the first two half the next half is going to be oh the lighting is terrible oh, the next half inch is your gusset so skip the third half inch and go to the next two put those together then you have a space and then you have two more half inches those become a hinge and then you have the one fourth inch piece and then a little bit left over, like about an inch or inch and a half. Okay. So you're going to put glue or whatever it is you use to make your hinge. So I just put glue so I can do this fast for you. Okay. I say fast and now it's not. Okay, then I don't put any glue on that space. I'm going to put glue in the next hinge. Fold it. So now we have two hinges made and there's a half inch gusset between them. And put glue in the last half inch attach it to your other half inch hold it together that makes your third hinge okay so now you can use wings if you want I don't like the wings so that one fourth inch you're going to wrap that piece behind okay so you wrapped that behind oh that's light you guys I'm sorry I don't know what to do about this lighting so you have that one fourth and I folded the rest underneath and I'm gonna go ahead and glue that Press down real good so that it stays. And now you have that other half, a uh, fourth of an inch on the other end. Fold that little piece that's left over behind so that you still have that one fourth inch gusset. And I'm going to glue that. down and push on it and 
Now I didn't use as much adhesive because this is just a sample piece for you, <laughs> if you can see. But that made three hinges with your fourth, a fourth of an inch on the edge, hinge, half inch, hinge, half inch, hinge, one fourth of an inch. The rest was wrapped behind and is now flat. Okay, I hope that helps. I apologize if it's hard to see. Um, so then you do the same technique with the other piece, but you'll only have two hinges and your edges will be one half inch. Okay, so you'll, you'll, you'll have a, a larger side piece. This is a half an inch, hinge, half an inch, hinge, half an inch. Okay, this is going to be my right hand side hinge and the one that has three is my left hand side. So that when you close the book, the pages can go every other page without getting in the way because one fits inside of the other just right. Okay, all right. Let's put the cover to the side for right now and work on our base pages. Let's get moving on to the base pages. I'm going to start with the right hand side. That's the side that has two hinges. Uh, these are the half pages that you attach to the hinge that looks like this. And then this has, uh, pulls out and um, when you open it, it's got the two places for pictures here. And then when you flip it open, you have what looks like a baseball diamond, or at least I hope that's what it looks for. That was the goal. So uh, let's go ahead and get started on that. Let's start with the real easy half page. Uh, I'm going to apologize. Um, I have a scratch out here, but when I do my tutorials, I do not type up a cutting guide. And so what I do is I put sticky notes on my paper. So if you want to have a notebook and watch this and then jot everything down, that's probably a good idea. Um, it's just too time consuming for me to type it up when I have a full time job. Wham, wham, I know, poor me. But anyway, okay. Um, so here we go. Two of them at uh, eight and a half by four, and two at seven and a half by four. So I say two because there's two pockets or two uh, hinges on the right. Okay. The page that seven or the piece at seven and a half by four, we're not going to do anything to that. I'm going to set that to the side. The one that measures eight and a half, we're going to place that eight and a half across the top. And you'll need to go ahead and score it one half on each end. Okay, and I have already done that. Now, after you've done that one half, you're going to want to go ahead and burnish those. Okay, easiest base page around. Okay, and then we're just going to glue that seven and a half piece right on top of that and when I look at this I need to trim this just a hair I think it doesn't look like it lines up just perfectly so I'm just gonna take a smidge like hardly anything off like tiny nothing okay let's see if that does the trick Yep, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, so I'm going to use the art glitter glue and I'm going to use that on the uh, half inch ends that I just burnished. I really need a new stainless steel pin. I've bent that one so many times. I'm just going to do one end at a time so I can line it up correctly. and make sure that it lines up at the top and on the sides and then go ahead and burnish okay and then now I'm going to place the glue on the other half inch and hopefully it matches perfectly and it looks perfect and burnish now if it doesn't work out perfectly because it's paper you can manipulate it a little bit and I'm going to just to make sure it lays flat I don't want it to be bubbly like so so what I do is I'm going to bring my um, tool my burnishing down 
I'm going to hold this at the top and bring it down to make sure that I get it to lay flat. Okay. And that's it for the page. Isn't that crazy? I didn't... I wanted this to be somewhat easy and fast. So I didn't do anything too detailed on this one. Okay, so there's our page. The hinge will be over here and we'll stick that in on the side. So let's move that to the side and now let's work with that booklet that I had inside. So these inserts um, for the black that I used for the uh, outside, you'll want to uh, cut those at 7 by 12. And you'll need two of them because there's two pages again on the right. And then um, we're going to fold those so that there's just a small gusset. So place your 12 inch side across the top. I need to find my... Um, we're going to make two score marks. One is at 5 and 7 eighths. 5 and 7 eighths. And then 6 and 1 eighth. Okay. Go ahead and burnish that. I glue on my hand. Okay, there is some bulk um, by with all the layers that are in the inside, so that's why that little one fourth inch guess it works out well. Okay, and then it should line up. Just like so. Okay. So there's the outside that goes in uh, to the pocket or to the base page. So next, what I'm going to have you do is the craft. At least I used craft. Um, you're going to need... Um, let me find it. I have my measurements somewhere. I thought I did. I don't see them now. Let me write it down. What do these measure? Um, the craft is five and a half by eleven. Five and a half by eleven. Why do I have four? I think I only need two. I already did one on the I already made the other book yeah I only need you'll need a total of four okay you'll need a total of four I've already done uh, used two of them so I just need two now but anyway five and a half and eleven by eleven and then we're gonna score those in half so place the eleven inches across the top and five and a half is where you want to score on both of them. Okay. Let's go ahead and burnish those in half, making sure they line up fine. My sleeves keep getting away. And then the other one. Okay, so these are the two that are going to flip up like so. You can cut, I use some green then to place on top to look like the grass. And so I have four of those and those measure five by five. Four green at five by five. And then you're going to need um, eight one and a half by one and a half inch squares and that's what I use for the base and I know that that's not an official home base but I just used squares for all of them so eight of these because you only need four for each and then actually um, you'll need eight of these green ones too I already used 
four of them, so I should have eight there. Okay. So write that down. And I already have those cut. And you are going to want a circle. And mine is a two and a half inch circle. And I did that in the craft. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and ink the um, outside edges because I want it to look dirty, um, like there's dirt on it. And it's just on the inside that I inked, not on the outside. And you just go along the outside parts. Don't do the inside where it's going to meet in the center because that won't look natural. So I was real, I didn't care about neatness at all. It can be that some it has more than others. It's not going to be straight because we know that dirt is not straight. <laughs> okay. And then along the bottom. Like so on that one. And then when this one opens we want the outside on that one also. So leave the inside non-brown. Okay, and I'm using the um, Distress Oxide, the gr uh, ground espresso. I used to use walnut stain all the time and vintage photo, but now I really use a lot of the uh, ground espresso. I like it. So let's see, does that look all right? Yep, looks pretty good. All right, so um, this will be tucked in our book. We're gonna open it. And we're going to end up putting these, we're going to center them top bottom and we're going to place it as close to the score line as we can. So you'll have that one fourth gusset in the middle, but that's okay because you need to be able to fold the book. Before we can glue it down, you do want to pick what kind of decorative paper you want around the outside edge because you will see that. And so we need to lay that down before we do any gluing. So let's uh, take a look at the paper I have and um, before I glue that down. So what I'll do, instead of going off camera right now, I will glue down my green papers. And so to the green, you're going to go up to the score and all the way to the side here. Okay. So that... When you open it, you have this border on the outside. So make sure you can fold it, that you don't go over the score line, and then butt it up right against the edge. Okay. And this green paper I had in my stash, I did not, I'm sure there's some spectrum that would match the kind of green in the collection. So I'm just going to close this and make sure I have it in the right spot. Looks good. Ah, I get glue all over my hands. Is it just me? I'm telling you, I cannot... When I use black or dark colors, you can see the glue. I get it all over the place. Okay. And now let's put another one on the top, again, right up to the score mark, or right down to the score mark, I should say, and then all the way to the edge. And this will be half of the field. we got to get the other half. Okay. Sure you don't oh, got to move that up a hair couldn't fold it okay all 
All right, now we're going to do the same thing to the other craft piece. This time we will um, have it, the green go all the way to this, uh, to the right hand side, like so. Go right up to the score line, but not over. You might want to fold it while you're doing it to make sure you didn't go too far. I'll do the bottom one first. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and burnish that. Alrighty, and now the top one. Turn this just so it's easier for me to see. And before I press down too much, yep, I can get it closed. Okay. So this is what we have so far. So it's getting there. Um, now what you want to do is use your uh, ground espresso or whatever color you're using um, and distress the edges of your bases so they look dirty. Now we're only going to glue this on two sides so that we can tuck a picture under it if we are putting photos on this page. Again, you don't have to be neat about the that part. You want it to look messy, okay? And while you're uh, go well, while you're at it, go ahead and distress ink up the edges here on your circle, okay? So let's glue these down. You only do two sides, like I said. So um, I took it off the green a little bit. And I'm going to put it on the right hand side and along the bottom. So that it's open here so you can tuck the picture. the top one. So this time we want glue along the top and the right hand side. Top and the right. And Make that extra glue. move that to the side and do the other one. So this one will be the left hand side and the bottom that we put glue. Using my nail just to get some of that extra glue off. And then one more, the top and the left. Like so. Now what we need to do is the pitcher's mound in the center like so. So we're going to go ahead and cut that into fourth. Now mine is a two and a half inch circle. 
So I'm going to find the halfway mark, which is one and a fourth. And I will just cut that in half. Make sure it's straight. And I'll get my... And then I'm going to cut it in halves again. And so again, I, I, like, I want mine to be even. I don't want to have one side bigger than the other. So I'm going to make another mark at um, the same place, uh, one and a fourth on both of them. Cross the diameter. Okay, let's go ahead and cut those. Oh, it moved on me. Well, that makes me irritated. I'm going to use scissors. Okay, I'll just have to make sure I glue it well enough. Okay. So let's go ahead and now we want to be able to put pictures down. So do not glue the side that you inked. That stays open. So I will just put ink along the top and the left. And butt it up to the edge and the top. Okay, then the next piece that does not match it's this one. Don't put it on the inked edge side. And then the two on the other side. Is that right? Yep. And then that's going to be all we need to do for that. I did uh, have a sticker that had a bat on it on the other one. I'll see what I can find on the sticker sheet that I could put on this one. Okay, so there we go. Um, you can go back and mat these how you want. Um, I just go either a fourth or an eighth of an inch smaller than the size. Um, I usually don't mat on camera. Um, let's take a look to see. On the last one I had a bat down here in the bottom left. Oh, there's more bats, so I'm going to take one of those bats. And I'm just going to lay it about like so. Got some glue. Okay. And there is our field. So remember before, now you might want to give these another burnish because now that they have some thickness to them because of the extra paper, you want it to lay down as well as you can. So just burnish it again. Okay. And then those will be, uh, you'll glue those in 
you'll um, put your decorative paper down first and then eyeball it so that you center the top uh, center it so that you have the same amount of space at the top and the bottom but go right up to the score mark but make sure you can still fold it okay so you'll have some on the right hand side that you can see and then you'll have some on the left that you can see these are backwards but so like so okay all right so I'll let you finish that one and I will finish mine off camera so that's the right hand side you do two of those okay so now let's start working on the left hand hinge and I tried to keep it organized we'll see how well I did okay so let's start with the base page okay now you have three hinges on the left so you're going to need three that measure eight by eight and three that measure seven and a half by seven and a half and these are top loading so we're not going to um we're going to score on two sides um so that we can close off the bottom and on the um, and we the side has to be open that attaches to the hinge but I didn't want the other side open because I want to have it top loading so you're not going to do anything with the seven and a half by seven and a half we do need to score the eight by eight okay and um, the score is going to be at seven and a half and then you turn it and score at seven and a half then you're going to cut out miter that corner where they overlapped where they intersected and then we're going to go ahead and burnish on the score So uh, when we put this together, you want to remember, well, I'll get to that when we start adding pockets and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and place glue so that we can get that put together and it will be open on the side and on the top. And I'm just going to do one at a time just to make sure I can get it lined up. Sometimes it's hard for me to see when I'm working with black paper. I don't know if you have the same problem that I do, but... closer so I could see if I had it lined up and I have some seepage of glue here and now I'm gonna put glue on this hin or this uh, half inch fold and hopefully I lined it up just right let me double check. You might have to do a little trimming, but ooh, I think it mine worked out just right. Okay. All right. Now, every time we're working on a page, make sure that you are keeping that open side on the left because that's what attaches to the hinge. So you're going to make three of those. I've already made two uh, ahead of time. So this is my third one. And so now we're going to make the pocket that all, all of them have a pocket. I got to find it. Hold on. Um, where did I put the pocket? Pocket, pocket, pocket. There it is. Um, all of the base pages have a pocket so you can cut out three of those they measure four by eight and a half 
and we're going to uh, score on three sides. We're going to score um, half uh, on the eight and a half inch side. We're going to score at half an inch, turn it half an inch, turn it half an inch. So I haven't done that yet, so I'll go ahead and do my scoring. And then go ahead and cut out that corner, that square in the corner. And then go ahead and burnish it. Now on two of my uh, two of my base pages, I have this pocket in the back, and on one of them I have it on the front. And I didn't do that on purpose, but I when I was making it, I screwed up. So. Um, I wanted these all to be on the back, but it didn't work out that way. So I'm making my middle page be the different one. Okay. All right, so I want this on the back. So I'm going to turn this over. See, I have the opening on the left. Now I'm going to turn it so that opening is on the top and on the right because this is on my back side. And I just want to do a dry fit to make sure it lines up. And it does, I think. Uh, actually, that looks a hair big. Let me try it again. Yeah, that, I must have, let me fix that. That's going to drive me crazy. Hmm. Let me just go over a little bit. Like I don't even need, probably like a sixteenth. Let me see if that does the trick. And that is why you do a dry fit first. <laughs> and that did it. Okay, so now I gotta burnish this real good. It's funny how you can be off, you do your scoring and cutting and you feel like you've got everything done right and then when you just sometimes doesn't work exactly the way you had it planned out. Okay, yeah, that works. I must have been off a little bit on my cutting or on my measuring or something. So put glue on all three sides. If you want to taper the top, go ahead. I did not. Okay, pinch the sides in first, and then the bottom. Line it up with the bottom and the sides. And go ahead and burnish that down. So you made three of those, whoopsie. This is actually my third one. I did, like I said, two off camera to save time. All right. So I'm turning it back to the um, opening on the left. I'm done with this back for a second. So opening is on the left. And for this one, um, let me find my pieces. Okay. So this is the double layered pockets. Um, flip pockets. Okay. You are going to need two 
that measure four and three fourths by six and a half. You are going to score at a half uh, with the four and three fourths side at the top. Score at half an inch on each side. Half an inch on each side. Okay. Um, I did miter my corner on one end of this, so you can see I that this is going to end up on our page this way, and I mitered it. And you score, or you burnish, and then we're going to end up putting glue. I didn't make a half inch, I didn't want it to get bulky, so we are going to put glue down here to seal this, um, but you're going to put one at the top and then the other one right next to it. So let me go ahead and burnish this one. I did my half inch on each side and one the mitering at the top. And again you want to do a dry fit to make sure that they can fit on the page right next to each other without any overlap or any gaps. Okay. So, opening, okay, so we're going to do a dry fit first, and if they're bumped right up against each other, and by golly, that one worked. Okay, so I'm going to do the bottom one first. I know I keep saying this, but it's open on the left and on the top. I'm placing glue on my one half inch fold on both sides and then I'm going to do it at the bottom to seal it shut. Okay, and I'm going to place that on the edge. and go ahead and burnish that down and of course I got glue on my it'll be covered but man I wish I could keep my hands clean the flatter the better and then um, we'll have little tags coming out and it might be um, that you have a ticket that you want to attach to the tag or something. I know my son was keeping a lot of the tickets from the games that he had been to. So that's probably what I'll put on these. Or the tags that I put in here. Okay, so now the other one. We're going to butt it right up against. Now I'm going to turn this upside down just so that I can see better. Perfect, okay. Glue. And on the bottom to seal it shut. And line it up. Perfect. Okay. And so now you'll have um, two pockets there and we're going to place a flip pocket on top. Okay, so let me give you some more measurements of some paper. You'll need two at three and three fourths by six, and you're going to need two that measure four and three fourths by five and a fourth. Okay, so you can write that down. Now I've already made one of my pockets, so I will just do one with you. So take the one that measures um, three and three fourths by six. 
and score at three fourths of an inch. Now normally I do a half an inch, but because I want this to be a little bit sturdier, I thought maybe three fourths would be better. So just on one end, do three fourths. Okay, so do that to both of them that measured three and three fourths by six. And then take the one that measures four and three fourths by five and a fourth and go ahead and score at one half inch. Turn it around one half inch. I did miter the corners at the top. Okay. And let's go ahead and burnish all of our score marks. Good. Now you can decide if you want to, um, if you want to punch like a half circle. Uh, let me show you once I get it made. Okay, so this three fourths of an inch flap we're going to tuck underneath and then we're going to glue this on top to form the pocket. And so we'll put glue on the two sides and at the bottom to seal it. Okay, and then we can decide if we want a little half, some sort of cut out there. So I'm going to do a dry fit here to make sure mine lines up. And it looks like it does. So my one, three fourths of an inch I tucked down behind it. So it's out of the way. So I'm just going to add my glue. And along the bottom, like so. And press down. Oh, look at all that extra glue. Yowza. Burnish down real well. Okay, and you need two of those, and I've already already made one. And then we're gonna glue those right on top so that they flip open. like so. So these should line up nice and neat also. And I do, do I want, you know what, I could have totally saved paper. Well, I wanted it to flat though. Okay. Um, do I want a half circle? You know what, I don't think I'm going to because the tag I'm going to make is going to stick out. So it'll be easy to, we'll be able to do it. Okay. So let's put glue on the three fourths inch strip to attach it. And line it up on top of that other piece. And burnish that again. Good thing this glue dries clear, that's all I can say, because whew. Okay, and then we're gonna do the other one. Glue it right on top of that pocket that we just made. I'm gonna turn it so it's easier for me to see. sure they line up. And I'm going to press down. Okay. 
and all these glue marks will be covered. All right, so when you have it on the hinge, these two will be able to flap open and you can then put tags in here, turn the page over and you have a back pocket. Now let me go ahead and explain to you what I did for my top loading pockets. I'll get that out of the way. Okay, um, the top inserts measure six and seven eighths by eleven and a half, and the reason that they're six and seven eighths, I know our page is seven and a half inches wide, but once you attach it to the hinge, you're not going to be able to stick the uh, a seven. It was close to seven inches, so I made it six and seven eighths. But this is you're going to lose some space once it's glued to the hinge. So. Um, and then you're going to need three at five by seven. And those five by seven pieces are what hold the flap down. Okay, so go ahead and write that down. And let me show you. Um, go ahead and place your uh, 11 and a half inch side across the top. And score at four inches. Four inches. Go ahead and burnish. And I chose four inches because if you have a four by six photo, I thought you could probably trim it and make it work on the front flap. Let me show you. So then this gets tucked in to the top. Okay. And then to make sure that it stays closed, and this will probably end up being over here more, unfortunately, but that's just what happens. Um, that's what your five by sevens are for then, is to put that in the pocket to keep it closed. So then open that, and then this will come out, okay? So that is the first page on the left-hand side. So I'm going to move that to the side. We're done with that. And let's get another base page, having it open to the left and to the top. Um, I, no, I'm going to go to the, okay, so this is the one that is going to be my middle page because I accidentally already glued my pocket and I put it on the wrong side. I'd put it on the front. And so to make sure it stays balanced, my first and third page have the pocket on the back. This one has it on the front. So I'm going to turn it over so that my opening is to the right and the top. And I have kind of a different type of belly band here that holds mats. So go ahead and cut this at five and a half by 12. And to make this work the way I wanted it to, we're not going to have as much, um, we're not going to have a half inch on the ends to attach it. It's only going to be a fourth of an inch, but it should be fine. Okay. So let me tell you about the scoring on this. I'm just, uh, you're going to place your 12 inches across the top. And I need to find my cheat sheet here. Uh, page insert. Okay. Um, so here's what I want you to, let me write it down so you can see it. That would probably be smart. So I'm going to write down the score marks. So we're going to start at one fourth, then go to one and a half, two, three and a half, uh, and four. Okay. One fourth inch, one and a half inches, two, three and a half, and four on the 12 inch side. Then you're going to go ahead and turn it around and do the same score marks with the same measurements on the other side. Okay. All right. So now the first one fourth inch is going to be folded down so that it can attach to our page. 
Okay, so here's my 1 4 inch. And then you're going to like fan fold it forward, backward, forward, backward, so that you end up, maybe you can see it better that way. So the first 1 4 went under, then I went to the next score line and folded it forward. The next score, of, uh, score line went to the right. The next one went to the left and then to the right. So just back and forth opposite. So it looks like so. Okay, hope that helps to see. Now, before you can attach this to the base, you should probably, um, you do need to mat it first because for this to fit on here, we have to make sure that it lays um, as flat as we can. So you're going to put your paper here on all those little sections. So put your paper and then you're going to glue these so that they stay down flat. These little half inch. I wish I wasn't using black paper. Ugh. I can't see it in the camera. Okay. Um, I'm trying to get just the right light. So this will be, this will have decorative paper, then this piece, and then this piece. And then you're going to put glue to keep them down. Okay. And then what you're going to end up doing is centering that and gluing the half or the one fourth inch pieces down at the top and at the bottom and center it like so and then this will hold three um, one two yeah three mats of varying sizes and I have not yet measured those so I'll have to come back um, I'll write myself a note so I don't forget I'll tell you what those measurements are at the end okay so don't glue these down until you mat them Last page is pretty easy. Remember this is to the back. This is our third page. We just have some flaps and those flaps measure four and a half by seven and a half and you need four of them. You're going to place the four and a half inch side at the top and score it one half inch. I used my, what was it called, um, scallop punch on the edge. Can you see that? It's a scallop edge. Okay, you are going to place the, so my opening is to the left. And we're going to place the sides first. So do a dry fit and make sure they fit on there. Okay, that one fits well. Just making sure they're the right. Yep. Okay, and then I did miter my corners. On the sides that I did not do the scallop punch, I went ahead and mitered. All right, I'm going to turn this sideways so I can glue it and see it better. Okay. And go ahead and adhere that. Checking to make sure. Okay. Wow, I did too much glue. Oh, 
Okay. And now I'm going to do the other side. So I'm going to turn it so that I can see it easier. Again, get rid of that excess glue coming out. And why don't you go ahead and burnish that real well. So now when you adhere the next ones, these ha uh, the next ones uh, have these open. And we will place these right in between. Now, before you glue it down, make sure the doors close. If see, I'm gonna have to trim a little bit off of mine because they're the doors won't close. So do a dry fit first. And I'm gonna take about a one sixteenth ish amount off. I'm just gonna take a little bit off. Just a smidge. Let's see if that does it. And then I'll have to redo the corner with my scallop. Okay, so now I want to close these, make sure. Okay, that's going to work. So let me repunch this. Okay. Doors open. they close. Whew. Glue everywhere. Okay. And then we just have one more. So do a dry fit first, make sure that it will close, and I'm sure I'm going to have to trim mine a hair. Yep. So let me get that back here. Let's see if that did it. Yep, if I glue it in the right spot, that should work. Okay. And I gotta fix this. And here we go. Just about done. Oh, jeez, look at these. And I'm a messy gluer. Okay. And then before you press down too hard, just make sure that it closes. So it's in the right spot. And mine is now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I need to take gluing 101. Okay. Now, um, let's 
So let me find the opening. There we go. And so once I um, put my decorative paper on, I'll have to decide what kind of closure I want. Maybe I'll have like a baseball bat here or something that I ha have on a swivel. I don't know. And then these open and these open. And I said that you probably want to put a mat in here, like a loose one that you can just lay in here. That's seven by seven. Just to have something that you can take out and put pictures on or write on the back or whatever. And that's all I'm going to do for that. All right. So I'll... Uh, and then all of them, remember, we've already cut out all of the tops. These just will slide in. And you'll have a 5x7 to keep it closed. Alright, so I'm going to do some matting. And then I will come back and I will tell you the measurements that I came up with for that um, staggered or that belly band piece. And we'll go from there. Okay, I'm going to give you some information since I've done a lot of work off of camera. Um, hopefully it's not too random, but uh, I'm just going to go through and give you some additional measurements of things as I added to my pages. Um, the first thing are the tags for the first page, the, uh, the two separate individual uh, tag holders. I made my tags at three inches by five and a half, and I made two of those, and then I added something... Um, what do you call that? The ephemera pack, or is that what you call it? Um, I just attached that and kind of made it add like a stopper, kind of, even though the tags pretty much go all the way to the bottom. But those were three by five. And then um, on these tags that I had here, they were also three, but they measure six and three fourths. Okay. And I just used twine. Uh, I didn't want anything too feminine, so uh, that's why I went with the twine. And on the back piece, uh, these were 5 by 7 and I just found some extra craft card stock that I thought would go good with this. Um, sorry. My attention went to something else. Um, and so I just stamped, like, put your picture here. These are open on the corners. I just took a square and cut them diagonally. Um, and then I'm trying to think if there was anything on this that I needed to say. I don't think so. Um, I did glue this all the way down. Oh, no, I didn't. I left it open so something can be tucked in there if you want a tag or something. Um, let me get a piece of scratch paper. I have a ton over here on the side. I say that not. There it is. So something can tuck in there. Okay, so just glue it on three sides. Uh, this was about a one inch strip. I'm trying to conserve paper, so I did not uh, put any on the back. And then this was a sticker, like to, or the stamp, like to put your picture here. So when I add these to the spine, I won't have these coming out the top because it'll get in the way. I hope I didn't make them too wide. That would be a disaster. Um, and then these keep the flap down. Okay. So I think that's the only thing I need to tell you about that page. Um, this page, I don't think I added just to like a mat for pictures, but nothing else changed on this. Um, so that can go to the side. You don't need any measurements on that one. Um, this one nothing on that side okay this side you do need to know um so if i were to do this again i think i would make this belly band this uh a little bit narrower so you could see the sides a little bit more and it would be a little bit nicer to look at i think but because of the way we folded the paper these tags don't slide down because they um catch in the like the half inch oh what do you want the half inch fold i guess so let me give you the measurements for the tags that I made or the mats that I made. This one was five and three fourths by three and three fourths. This one was six and a half by five and a half. And I left the backs plain. 
And then this one is seven by six and a half, okay? And so when you put them in, like I said, because of the way we folded it, your pictures or your mats don't slide out and around. Be I say that. Um, and they stay in place, which is nice. Okay, put that one back in. But I, I w like I said, I would have made it more narrow so you could see more of this side. So that's what you needed to know with that one. This one, I don't think there's anything I need to tell you. It's the same as the first one. So no new measurements on that. Okay, on this one, my closure, I ended up doing just these real thin uh, like belly bands. And so I did not add any of my decorative paper to the back of these doors. So here's what you need to know. If you choose to make two little belly bands, it was you want to mat the front first, but leave this empty. Don't mat this. And so I cut the belly band the way I wanted. I um, then laid it where I wanted and I uh, traced the lines where I would make a slit uh, to put the little piece behind it to keep, and then I matted the paper on top so that you don't see that. Um, but it's. Um, it was the best thing I could come up with without having to use a magnet or I, I never put the the things even you know when you wrap them around with the string so I didn't want to go that route so I thought this was the best way to go so mine measure uh, one and a half across by two long um, and like I said you just draw where you want to make your slits and I used an exacto knife and then once you put stick the half inch through and glue it down then you add your white paper okay you don't really need a closure for this because when you close the front doors these stay closed this paper was a hair short so I um, just put a little piece of paper here and glued it on three sides so it could be a pocket this is just glued on top so you can still tuck things underneath and have them uh, stay in there without falling out left these open this was just from the paper collection. I cut out some of the tickets from that paper. Okay. And this measures six and a half by one and a fourth. And then you just slide it through. Okay. And then that keeps it from flapping open. And then on the back, I don't think there's anything new measurements I need to show you. I left, like I said, these back. I used the stamp to say, like, place your picture here. All of these inserts were the same. The top loading one, I just went ahead and did them all exactly the same. All right. So I think we're ready to go back to the cover. Um, the way we left it. was we had wrapped it but we had done nothing else yet so i'm going to mat it uh, on the inside with i'm trying to decide if i want black paper or if i actually want to go with a craft colored paper usually i do the same color but i don't know that might make it look more baseball-y let me just lay out a piece of craft i actually i may not have enough so I'm trying to decide if I would like that. Huh. I have green, and to me that uh, is like grass, but I don't know if I like green with the black. Let me get my... So Country Craft Creations also carries a green uh, in the artisan. Sorry about the crinkle, you guys. So I just want to see what it would look like, the green up again. Oh, I kind of like that. I kind of do. Let me see if it matches the green in the paper collection. Excuse me, let's see. <laughs> now I can't find any green. Here we go. Oops. You know what? I think I I kind of like that. 
Yep, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do green. So here's what you need to do. Um, we're going to need to combine some paper together to mat on here. Um, I'm actually going to do this piece first, I think, and then play, uh, place other paper on top to hide the seam. Um, our book is eight inches tall, so I'm going to make my paper mm, probably seven and seven eighths, seven and three fourths. It's whatever your preference is as to how much of a border you like. So um, you can decide. And we need at least, there's 15. I'm going to go with, I need it to be at least... Uh, probably 23 inches long because there'll be a little bit of overlap and then I'll have another piece that I do this separate so I'm gonna go ahead and glue my paper together um, and then I will come back and we'll get that taken care of um, we also need to add a magnet before we add this green paper so it's a good thing I had that sticky note otherwise I would have forgotten so let me find my magnets I just reorganized here they are so I'm going to use the um, basic gray magnets, and I have the larger ones. And uh, these can be purchased at countrycraftcreations.com uh, also. And so I'll be putting a magnet here. And um, let me see where I want the magnet. Yuck. So I want to make sure my book is square. So I'm thinking about here is where I want the magnet. So I'm going to do that right now before I forget. Let me open up my package of magnets. I need to purchase some more. And um, they have adhesive on the back. But sometimes I still add some more. So I'm going to need a positive and a negative. Ouch, that hurt. Oh, there's my positive. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the backing of, I put the two magnets together. And I'm just going to place it about right there. There, I think is where I said let me before I push down too hard yep that should work okay I'm gonna push down and then I'm gonna end up putting a piece of score tape on top of it so now we're gonna close our book Make sure okay take the backing off of this one And line it up. I want to make sure I get it just right. Okay, and then I'm going to push down so that they'll separate. Perfect. Um, I am going to take a piece of score tape and run it across to keep it in place. I'm just going to use the 1 8 inch score tape. If you use too much I feel like it kind of loses its strength just to keep it in place. And here I'll do the same thing. Okay. Let's see if that holds. I wonder if I need more than one. Uh -huh -huh. I wonder if I should do three. Is that overkill? Hmm. I hate to go to all that work and then it not close. But once I put paper on here, I have a feeling I'm going to need another. I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to load up. You don't have to, but I am. Um, I'm going to take out two more. So one of each, a positive and a negative. Oops. And you may feel like you don't need that, and that's totally okay. Or you might have gone with a different type of closure. 
So now I just need to decide where I want them. And now they're all stuck together. I feel like it needs, well, you know what, I'll just, I don't want it too close to the edge. I'm just going to, I'll put it randomly. I don't care. It'll work. So I'll put one here. Let me make sure it's going to land on the book. Yep, and it's not going to be too close to the edge. And then I'll put the other one on the other side. I'm just playing it safe. <laughs> Get it? Baseball, playing it safe. Okay, I've been down here in this craft room too long. Okay, before I push down, let me make sure it lands in a good spot. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to press down and then I'll go ahead and remove this backing. When I first started using these magnets, I didn't know they had a paper on the back. So I was gluing them down and it was stupid. I <laughs> learned the hard way that, oh, there's, this has got a sticky back to it. Okay, so I'm going to press down. Okay, good, they stayed. And then let's go ahead and put score tape on those two. Just to make sure they don't move. And I'll do that here also. All right. Good thing I had those sticky note reminders because I would have forgotten. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think I'll probably make mine 7 and 7 eighths. I can always trim it if it's too long. You can't add to it if it's too short. And I'm going to make it at least, what did I say, 23 inches, 15. Yeah, I'll make it about 23. Well, I'll just make it 24 because I have two 12-inch pieces. So uh, let me get that ready, and we'll talk about doing this um, and making sure we get that cut correctly. So I'm going to use the green. I'll be right back. Uh, this green paper on camera looks very fuzzy, so I apologize for that. Um, my green paper ended up being 22 inches long, and the seam is going to end up in the perfect spot, so it's okay like so. Um, and so now we need to work with this. So I have this piece, and it is, what is it, one, two, three, about four inches by seven and seven eighths. And so there's going to be some overlap, and that's totally fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place this behind my cover on the opposite side and line it up. i got to make sure everything is straight. So I'm going to use my grid on my workspace here and make sure that I have it lined up. And then I want to line this up. Remember, we I cut mine 7 and 7 eighths, so I need to move this up a little bit above the line. Okay. And I'm just going to take a pencil and trace it, um, knowing that I'll have to cut inside of the marks. Okay, about like so. And I'm just going to draw. Okay, so I just traced it with a pencil and then there you go. And I'm going to cut on the inside of that cut just to see how we're doing. About an eighth of an inch maybe. Okay, and then about an eighth of an inch on this side. Or close and we may have to go back and fine-tune it a little bit it may not be perfect so let's see how that works actually I'm very happy with that 
there's it's a little bit uneven from my cutting but you'll never notice well I do because I see it there but anyway that's gonna work for me so I'm gonna uh, place this down first and then I will put this on top and overlap it and then I'll have that taken care of um, some people use art glitter glue uh, some people use score tape to adhere this I do a little bit of both I'm gonna run score tape around the perimeter uh, of my green paper and I'm gonna place uh, score tape on either side of wherever the uh, where the spines are uh, just to help it lay down and then I fill the center with art glitter glue okay so that's what I'm going to do next and then we should be ready to start adding our designer paper I went ahead and did some covering of my book and as I was looking at it I decided I needed something on the inside so I took a um, seven and seven eighths uh, piece by four and a half and scored it on three sides to make a pocket and then I went ahead and matted those two um, did the sides the same now when it came to this one I cut my paper to sizes as um, I think it was seven and a half by seven and a half and then I laid the paper behind it like so and then I traced it and then I cut inside of the line just like I did last time so that's what I've done so far now I was going to put paper on the spine but I decided not to the hinge that has two is going to be on the left and the hinge that has three is going to be on the right and I am just going to um, adhere that with art glitter glue and center it top bottom and side to side and then it's going to be time to add the pages so let me go ahead and do that all right I had to put this away for a little while because um, school got in the way and I've been busy doing school stuff so um, it's been a week since I've recorded so I just want to make sure that I've touched base with everything <clears throat> excuse me I went ahead and did the the cover and I wanted it to look like a base so I just used white paper and then I took my distress ink and tried to dirty it up a little bit this was from the ephemera pack um, have some chipboard stickers here the word home run was with my thickers um, like I said I don't remember what I said in my previous recordings but um, this was a piece of canvas that I got um, and it was already in the shape of a pentagon to look like the base so I put that on there and just glued some of the chipboard pieces on this was that Prima paper here on the side um, it looks kind of like leather and then I did the back okay so um, I am ready to glue my pages inside and I did take out all the inserts so that I just have the pages by themselves um, I have them in the order that I want them you want to make sure that the opening is on the left hand side for the large pages and when I adhere this I am going to use glue rather than uh, score tape and when I put this on I scoot it all the way to the bottom okay so I um, made the hinge just a hair shorter than the page but I butt up the bottom against and when I glue it I'm going to want to make sure that I can lay it down as much as possible okay so um, I don't glue it all the way to the very bottom I lift it up just a hair okay I am going to work from the back page to the front page so my back page is the one that has um, the double doors now I hold up I'm going to remember to um, put as a caption that I ended up putting a little bit of a I think I did went back and did a 1 8 gusset so that the doors closed nicer and I had plenty of paper to work with so that wasn't a problem so I need to write myself a note to make sure I put that on there but in case I forget please know I did put a 1 8 I went back and put a little gusset in there okay so I'm just gonna put some glue and lay this down as I adhere it making sure that I'm happy with so I want it to be able to lay down as much as possible okay and I think we'll go with that so I'm gonna go ahead all the way down to the bottom and here we go don't be afraid to use plenty of glue 
side. This gives you a little bit of wiggle room time also to adjust it. Okay. And I'm just going to slide this. And I'm going to lay it down. Ooh. Checking both sides. Okay, and I'm going to start pushing down real well to make sure it adheres. on the other side a little bit of glue coming out but that's okay it'll dry clear Ugh, I'm just trying to push down real well I want it to adhere and because it's glue I'm just going to give it a couple seconds if it was score tape yes I'd push down and move on but this one I'm just going to wait a little bit more okay Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one. Let me just make sure. Okay, now this one's not going to lay all the way down, but it'll be pretty close because now you have some bulk underneath of it. So I'm going to go ahead and put my glue, I'd say the top half of the hinge. And I'm being generous with the glue. Okay. All right. I think that's enough. Open it up and slide it to the end here. I'm going to lay it down and push down. And on the other side. All right. And we have one more on the left, and then we'll move to the right-hand side. And bulk, this one's not going to look. But you, like I said, you don't want to put your page all the way to the bottom of your hinge. Open it up and make sure I slide it all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to lay it down just to see how far it'll go. Press down real good. Let it give it time to set. The other side and push down. Okay. Now, sometimes I do put paper in my gussets. Um, this time I'm not. And mainly the reason, and then this could be a silly thing, but um, I'm trying to make this as masculine as I can. And so I don't want to add too much foo-foo. And that's why um, finding, I'm not doing a bunch of flips and flaps. I'm just styles, just because I think it's better to do that. Okay, so here's what it looks like so far from the top, but now we have to add the other side. Okay, so I'm going to move these 
and now I'm and remembering that we put the went to the bottom and pushed all the way up even though this one's closed at the top I still want to make sure I butt it up to the bottom okay so it'll look like so I'm gonna add my glue being generous going about halfway down Scoot it on there. Down. Real firmly. Got a little bit of glue. fits on there yep okay and it's always nice to see it once it's all put together and I may go back and add something to the front cover uh, the inside front cover I don't know what yet if I did, it would just be like a basic pocket or something, like a maybe a library pocket. I don't know. Okay. Here, that one. this way all right pinch the top and the bottom just make give it a good firm Okay, so now let me add the inserts to that. I know I'm not going to put anything on this page, but I'm, well, I don't think I am going to put a pocket on the front. I think I'm just going to leave it. Um, so let me do the inserts for the right hand side. that one and that one all right so now let's remember we alternate the pages so this 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 All right. What is that stuck on? I think I have some decorations that are getting stuck. Okay, so once I unstuck my decorations, this is what it looks like from the top. And I'm gonna hopefully remember to put some of my notes in as captions. But if you do have any questions about the book, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Um, sometimes uh, it's that you bore people, but yet sometimes you too much detail. I'm trying to find a happy medium. So anyway, if you have questions, just let me know. I'm pretty stinking happy that the paper line was so awesome to work with again. 
if um, you're interested it's at countrycraftcreations.com and I appreciate you watching my tutorials and supporting I'd appreciate it if you do and um, I will continue to put um, my tutorials up and I'll have um, product shares and um, project shares so thank you everybody and um, I will come back soon